Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum dear viewers and welcome to the 14 pillars. The Ahlul Bayt alayhum as for everyone. Our Ramadan special here on Imam Hussain TV where today we are discussing the very important topic of charity, especially in this holy month of Mahi Ramadan. My name is Sister Sayyidah Mahdi and I'm joined by Sister Dua. Sister Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sister, inshallah you're well, inshallah your holy month is going well. And this topic of charity, charity is something that we should be doing throughout the year. But especially in this holy month of Ramadan, it's very important to discuss. And if, for example, we are not doing charity or we haven't done enough charity throughout the year, then we should make a point to start in this holy month of Mahi Ramadan, make a promise to increase the amount of charity that we do, inshallah. Our beloved Imam Ali, our first Imam alayhi salam, has said, Do not feel ashamed if the amount of charity you give is little. For to refuse the needy is an act of greater shame. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said, Every good deed is charity. Even your smile for others is charity. The best of charity is done in the month of Mahi Ramadan. So charity is not just money. Often we say, um, I haven't been paid this month, I can't afford to give charity. But our beloved Prophet Muhammad is telling us the simplest form of charity is smiling. Your akhlaq, your manners, how you speak to people, how you treat people. If somebody's having a bad day, just by smiling at them and making them happy is charity. Your time your knowledge that you impart upon others. In the holy month of Ramadan, we are rushing our children to go to the madrasas and the community centers. We want them to be in part of that community feeling where they sit down and they learn. They learn from the majalises, they read the Quran, they read the dua. This is all charity. Us striving and working hard is charity. And those teachers who are teaching is also charity. So let's look a little bit more about charity. In this particularly in this month of Mahi Ramadan that we are in. And let's open up today's topic of conversation by looking at what are the different types of charity that one can do, especially in this holy month of Ramadan. So you've said a lot, you know, about the different types of charity. It's not only money, because sometimes we think, you know, it's only the money that you give. That's charity. And we tend to overlook the other types of charity that the Prophet, be some blessings be upon him, mentions. You know, it's a smile, it's saying a nice word, it's motivating someone, it's helping your brother or sister in Islam, you know, growing as a community, as family, as a city, as, you know, as Muslims in general. We all need help. We all need a, a kalima hasana, you know, a good word that you would say to someone. Um, instead of just, you know, uh, being negative to people, we realize that this is charity to actually be positive and tell people the good things instead of the bad things. You know, instead of holding this magnifying glasses and, you know, running after someone and just zooming on their their flaws, the kalim al hasan al sadaqa is where you say good words, you know, to someone. You show them the things that, you know, they're, they're, it's their weaknesses, but you show them their strengths. Instead of, you know, focusing on their weaknesses. These are the kind of things, you know, we overlook them. We don't talk about them. We don't discuss them. You mentioned, for example, um, being a teacher, being a parent, being a wife or a husband or whatnot. You know, this is all sadaqah that we do daily. So it doesn't always have to be, you know, pounds and, you know, money. However, there are also different types of sadaqah that Ahl Bayt Salam talk about. And the Quran also mentions, you know, the private sadaqah versus the public sadaqah. And they both have its value. A lot of people say, oh, no, these people who go on TV, for example, they just show others that they're donating. But that also, there's a hadith on Imam Sadiq, salam, that there is a benefit. And the benefit to it, it's because you're publicizing it, you're teaching others. You're allowing others to learn that, you know, we should give sadaqah. We should show those poor who are needy and give so that those who have will think of giving. But if we always keep it in private... Who's going to learn? Who's going to copy? Who's going to imitate? Who's going to be motivated to give charity? So, you know, there's always these charities where they always publicize, you know, we've given this poor, we've given so-and-so, we've helped so-and-so. It's so that those people who have and are able to give and, and donate to, you know, jump in and donate. And you have a narration by Imam Sadiq that if you give sadaqah in, in public, 
you will turn off the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah tatfu ghadab rabb if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angered upon you and he's going to throw wrath up, um, wrath upon you, what will happen is that that will turn off. You know? Because when you're teaching others, it's like the fahasha. When you do evil and injustice, when you spread it, why is it a big sin? It's because others are going to learn from you. So that type of, you know, charity of, you know, giving it in public is not wrong. And often we always hear criticizing about that. Oh, those people, they just give charity in front of public. Um, you know, they don't do it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The intention, Allah knows your intention. You know, Allah says, I know your intention. But if you give it in public and you have a sincere intention, you're going you're gonna to get a hasana for that. There's a benefit for that. If I have wrath upon you, you know, ghadab, that you've done a sin, I will, that will get turned off. So there is this public charity, and then you have this private charity, and that also has its benefits. So there's both, you know, public and the one that you do in secret. And the narration from Imam Sadiq salam says, the charity that you give in secret, um, you won't die in the bad death. You know, um, some people die in a horrible death, maybe in fire, uh, you know, getting burned in a building or maybe, you know, drowning or maybe in a car accident, a severe car accident. That charity will, you know, refrain you from being dead in a, in a horrible death that you don't want. Um, so we realize now that there's hadith for both and there's an ayah Qur'ani as well for both that if you give charity alanan or bisir, both of them, if it's publicly or if it's privately, they both have its benefits. And this is something that, you know, we often don't think of that, you know, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he used to give charity in secret and, you know, he would always hold a bag and he would knock on the doors at night and he would uh, veil himself with his um, turban so that no one would realize he's the imam. And he would go door to door and he would give charity. And no one knew that this was the imam. But when he died, people realized that this man never knocked the door ever again on us. And then they realized that this was Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And that was the type of charity that the Imam did to show us and send us a message that yes, I am the Imam. Yes, I am a ma'soom. Yes, I'm infallible. Yes, I'm the greatest. But at that time, I don't have to show it. I'm going to do both. He did give charity publicly, the Imam, and he also did it secretly. So he gets both of these benefits and he teaches it to us. Because we need to learn. If we don't learn it from the Imam, who are we going to learn it from? So when the Imam, peace be upon him, uh, passed away, the people in the village realized that no one's knocking the door on us anymore. Who was this man? And they realized that this was the Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. And we can do it in this holy month of Ramadan, you know, to give charity, one, publicly, because it has its benefits, two, in secret. You know, it doesn't matter... Um, who we are, you know, who's Imam Sadiq, he's the greatest. Go, knock the doors on the poor, sit with them, give them. And, you know, it doesn't have to be on social media, but you're still giving, you're helping families that no one knows of. Um, you know, back in the days before even social media and before the websites and the internet, we used to keep like a charity box. And it's called a sadaqa box. And usually what we used to do is like give up change. You know, you have 10 pence, 15 pence, like all that change that you have, a pound or maybe even less. And sometimes when you'd gather them throughout the whole year, you'd realize they would not reach 100 pounds or $100. And plenty of times, you know, it's all pennies and coins and we're counting them and they're not even 100, you know. Uh, 100 quids or $100. And then you realize that now, alhamdulillah, due to the technology and, you know, people asking during the month of Ramadan for charity, pay charity here, charity there. We're not even focusing on that box anymore of coins. What we do is we pay charity, you know, why? All right, we have, you know, some money in our bank account, let's send it. You know, it's easier. And if you realize that um, it became that we're paying charity a lot more than we did before. And that charity is going direct. 
So it's not being saved up for a whole year until you go find. No, you're sending it already to a poor who's in need. It doesn't matter how much is it. It is. It could be a pound. It could be more. It could be, you know, your, your cup of coffee that you're going to go out today, you know, and enjoy. And you're like, whatever, I'm just going to pay it. You know, someone asked me for donations and it's online and I don't want to reject them. No one's going to know. You just send it. You know, you click a button on your phone and boom, you donated. And these are very great different, you know, types of uh, ways to ask for charity because it's not only that box that you're getting all your uh, change in it and then at the end of the year you'll give it and then then it will reach the person that it needs to reach the needy now it's simple you want a needy boom you paid it and it goes directly to them it's helping them so your sadaqah has reached what it needs to be reached a poor a needy an orphan um, so it's very important to understand two types the sadaqah that's secretly and the sadaqah that's done um, publicly, they both have its benefits. Uh, we need to stop crit criticizing the public sadaqah because the niyyah is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, he's the only one who knows the niyyah. Um, and we need to do both because that one that you do publicly is going to allow your peers, your friends, and everyone else to jump in and donate. Absolutely. And with everything and in, in, in every walk of life, it always depends on your niyyah. Even if you're doing something, and you, in, in public, you're doing the best of actions. If your niyat is not sincere, then it's accepted less by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with everything that we do, with any amal that we do, it always has an impact greater if our niyat is pure. And you spoke about the charity of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And in fact, our imams, all of our imams did charity. They would go through the night, they would distribute to the poor, and they learned this from the father of the orphans, Imam Ali alayhi salam, who would go through the night carrying sacks on his body, carrying sacks on his back through the, the streets of Kufa so that the orphans would not feel orphaned. They did not feel like they were missing their father. He became their father, which is why we call him our father, because he didn't let those children feel like they didn't have a father. And then every imam after that has learned from Imam Ali alayhi salam. So they all have this characteristics of charity in secret and charity in public as well. And of course, we spoke about modern technology now just by the click of a finger, we can donate as much as we want, alhamdulillah. And we all have the access to the internet nowadays. But that charity box as well has an essence to it as well because it's that physical coin or that physical note that your child puts in that box. So see, it's very easy to say, okay, I'm going to donate and I've, I've clicked my buttons and I've connected to my bank account and I've paid that donation in the month of Ramadan, for example. But for the child to pick up that one pound that they've saved with their pocket money and to put it into that box, they feel that value far more than if it was £100 that you donated online. Yes, that £100 would probably reach faster, but at least that child is learning the essence of that value of that pound that they've saved up. Instead of buying that sweet or that toy that they want, they're donating it to the needy. And especially in this holy month, this is something that we need to instill in our children every day. If you give a pound every day from your pocket money, by the end, on that end of Eid, you've saved up 30 pounds in your box, that 30 pounds can be used to buy an Eid gift for the needy in the next country that can't afford it. And we talk about charity a lot in this holy month. We often don't understand the value of Sadqa Jariya, the charity which is everlasting. For example, sister, we have the charity of simple charity like planting a tree. Whoever plants that tree that charity for that planting of that tree will benefit them for as long as that tree is alive. So whoever sits under that tree to get shade, whoever eats the fruit from that tree, they're getting the benefits of whoever is using that tree. Even planting, uh, we've talked about planting a tree, even building a well. Mm -hmm. Everyone who drinks that water, everyone who uses the water from that well, uplifting of the community, that one person who has donated that well is getting charity for generations to come, for years to come, even after he or she passes away. And we sometimes we don't talk enough about the charity of knowledge and time. If you go and teach a child in your madrasa, that child will then, whatever they have learned, 
teach somebody else and it's a ripple effect. So that simple Qur'an that you've taught a child when they're three years old, when they become 30 and they're reciting fluent Qur'an, you're getting the thawab of all of that. So these type of charities we often don't think about and we only think about the monetary value of charity. In fact, the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam, give such beautiful narrations on charity like you said Imam Sadiq alayhi salam has given narrations of charity and even Imam Sadiq alayhi salam has said I am sometimes reduced to poverty so I trade with Allah through charity so we know that charity cools the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and charity cools the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but charity also increases sustenance so, subhanAllah, we have these beautiful narrations. Is there any other narrations that we have from the Ahlul Bayt salam, that emphasize the, the act of charity and giving? You know, there's a lot of narrations um, from Imam Sadiq, Rasulullah, Imam Ali, all regarding charities. Um, you know, just to mention them all quickly, we have the first things, calamities. You know, in our daily lives, we fall through plenty of calamities, issues, problems, illnesses. And, you know, when you pay charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, you know, secure you from this illness and from, you know, this trauma. It'll take it away from you, you know. So that's why they say, you know, when you're going through a dilemma or a problem or even that you have, you know, a child that's ill, a family member, you're not feeling well the day, things are not going well. And they say, you know, pay charity because it turns it off like it's done. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you gave him sadaqah. You did something good that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stop all these calamities. So in this life that we're living, especially in this era, it's full with so much, you know, traumas and calamities and uh, problems and issues. And they're increasing, especially the illnesses. And I was speaking to a friend of mine and she was telling me, have you realized how children are born today with so much illnesses that, you know, in the previous generations, there was not that much of children that were born with illnesses, you know, um, and it has increased. And I was like, yeah, we've reached an era where there's so much autism, so much syndromes, so much illnesses. Um, Due to food, it could be due to the environment. We don't know. Due to stress, due to whatever it is, um, in this holy month of Ramadan, if we reach literally keep paying charity and helping the poor, and giving it out in the niya of you know shifa for our children. If a woman was pregnant, you know every day, you know give a niya. I will give charity. I will give charity out for the safety of my child, um, even if the child is born safe. You know you don't know what's gonna show up later in the early years of their life so always pay charity um, you have you know two couples who get married you know often we, you don't know how their life is going to begin how they're, they're going to start their life and you know now there's increases of divorce rates increases of problems increases of issues so to begin their marriage life you know if there's two couples who are just mar newly married or going to get married after the month of Ramadan in this holy month of Ramadan make the niya niya is very important that I'm going to pay a charity it could be a pound every day that, you know, <clears throat> this is all to secure uh, less traumas and less, you know, problems and issues and calamities for our marriage life. Um, for a woman who's newly pregnant, you know, because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yitfa al bala, you know, if there, if there was a sin that you've done or if there's any reason that you were going to give birth to a child who's ill and you pay charity on behalf of that niya, you know, Allah yitfa, he pushes it away. Um, so these are very, you know, very great uh, narrations from Ahl Bayt that we know that we go through dilemmas, calamities, um, problems, issues in our daily lifestyle, whether we're married, whether we have children, whether we're even going to school, you know, on our way driving, um, you know, sometimes you realize when you're driving, if you just glimpse ahead and look somewhere else where you can enter, you know, into a truck or maybe fall off. Um, a hill or whatnot. So all these sadaqah is very important. And this is something that, you know, our parents always taught us. Before you exit the house, you pay a sadaqah. And when you come back from the house, you pay a sadaqah. And all these habits, we took them from Ahlul Bayt, is that, you know, fearing a calamity that you may fall or misfortune, pay sadaqah before you exit. Pay sadaqah when you come back. Pay sadaqah before you go to a vacation. Pay sadaqah when you're back from a vacation. Um, when, you know, a newborn baby is born, you know, pay sadaqah. And, you know, our previous parents you know ancestors they did all that 
But we tend to slowly forget about that. You know, yes, we know it. It's in the back of our heads. We're like, oh, yeah, we remember. But we're not doing it that much. And if we actually do this often, we would realize that there will be less calamities, less misfortunes, less issues. Um, so this is like all from the hadith of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi wa sallatu salam. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we, even in Islam, we have, for example, the slaughtering of an animal. Um, it's such a big charity and such a big sadaqah to do. We, we do, for example, on, you know, in the month of Hajj, we do this. But um, we should be doing this throughout the year in the good times and in the tests and trials. Sadaqah and charity when we're happy. When we've achieved something in our life, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us, for example, with a, with a new child or a new home or a new job. But sadaqah in calamities, when, when, we, when we're fearful of something or somebody is not well, uh, somebody falls ill, somebody's in hospital, because we don't know how often this charity saves us from calamities. Sometimes we say, oh, why did this happen to me? But it could have been a lot worse had we not done that charity. And I always tell my children and every child that I teach that you take the, sad the sadaqah out, you take the charity out, but you always remember Imam Zamana first. You always pray for him first before you pray for yourself. You always pray for him, you pray for others, and then you pray for yourself. You take out sadaqah and charity for his protection, for his quick reappearance. You take out sadaqah and charity to gift it to him for his happiness, and then you take out charity for yourself because that charity becomes 10 times sweeter. Mm -hmm. If you remember the imam of your time, that charity is sweeter and it probably lasts longer and the effects are multiplied. And we know that charity has been there throughout the beginning of Islam. Charity is instilled in us because of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. If you look at, for example, the earliest forms of charity of Islam, Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha, she gave her wealth for Islam. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, himself has said that had it not been for the sword of Ali, the support of Hazrat Abu Talib, and the charity of Sayyidah Khadija Salamullahi Alayha, Islam would not have propagated and prospered in those early few years of its, in its birth. We have the examples of Hazrat Abu Talib himself, his charitable action of allowing our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sayyidah Khadija and Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha to reside in the valley of Hazrat Abu Talib when the sanctions were placed upon our beloved Prophet, that was a charitable action as well. Sayyidah Khadija would allow others to eat in that valley. She would herself go hungry and eat leaves because there was no food. She then brought down this charity to her children, to Sayyidah Fatima Salamullahi Alayha, who then gave away her wedding dress on her, on her wedding night. Or the charity that they gave the three consecutive nights when they were fasting for Hassanayn Alayhi Salam. And then that charity was then instilled on the day of Ashura, where Sayyidah Zainab Salamullahi Alayha gave up everything for the sake of Islam. Her whole family was sacrificed. Her children were sacrificed in front of her for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his pleasure. But she saw nothing but beauty. The beauty was in his pleasure. So this charity has always been there in Islam. And we learn from this charity. Let's just talk a little bit about this now, more sister. How has Islam and the, the narrations and the traditions of our Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam taught us about charity and why we do it today? You know, the biggest charity that was ever mentioned in history, you know, you did mention Lady Khadija and you mentioned Lady Fatima alayhi salam, but the biggest charity that ever was mentioned in history that Allah descended a verse uh, was the charity that Imam Ali alayhi salam gave when he was praying. You know, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولَهُ وَالْمُؤْمُنُونَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ يَقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيَأْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكِعُونَ You know, this narration says that one day a poor man entered the mosque of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Masjid Rasulullah, and he asked people for charity and no one answered him. The Prophet was praying and Imam Ali alayhi salam was praying. And he asked, you know, anyone, charity, charity, no one gave him. So he looked into the sky, he said, oh Allah, bear witness that I have asked for charity and no one has given me. In the house, in the masjid of Rasulullah. 
at that time, Imam Ali, he was doing ruku' bowing, and he gave his hand out, take my ring as a charity. And that poor man took it because he can sell it. He can live with it. So the Prophet here, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he said, Oh Allah, Musa asked you, you know, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri Sirri Amri, and bring me my brother Harun Akhi, so he can be, you know, the backbone of mine. And you descended a whole verse. And my beloved Ali, he had donated a charity while he's praying, and he is my brother. I want you to descend a verse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that time, the, the who were seated around Rasulullah heard Rasulullah pray. And they said, as soon as he completed, an angel was descended, Jibra'il, with the verse, Bismillah ar rahim innama waliyukum Allah wa rasuluhu alladhina amanu alladhina yaqimuna salat wa yaituna zakata wa hum raki'un. For whom? For Imam Ali alayhi salam. That charity was sincere. He did not reject anyone, even though he was praying. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would descend a verse because he knows everything. But he wanted to show us how he valued what he saw from Imam Ali alayhi salam. That no matter what you're doing in your life, you need to give a charity even if you couldn't afford anything. But when someone asks you, don't refuse them. You know, sometimes often we don't have cash in hand. We don't have that cash flow. But you know, we have a lot of things that we can, you know, sell them and give them in charity. Especially when we see those people in this month of Ramadan that they can't really eat iftar. And we are having, you know, five different types of varieties of iftar. And you know, we have plenty of expensive shoes and accessories and purses in our, in our closet. You know, we need to think about spending less on ourselves. And if we don't have that cash flow because we're, inve we're investing in other things, you know, we can literally be like Imam Ali alayhi salam and copy him and imitate him that he gave his ring. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much his ring would have, you know, cost, but even if it, it was the value of it was something very few, it was a charity that he can go and ask, you know, uh, for wealth and sustenance for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in this holy month of Ramadan, we can learn from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Because this is the month of Allah and this is the month of him as well. This is the month that we mourn him and we remember his martyrdom. And we need to know that um, if we don't have cash in hand, but we have things in our closet, clothing in our closet that are brand new, we can donate them to the poor. We can donate them to those who are in need. You know, sometimes we give the clothing that are ripped, that are old to charity to donations, mm -hmm. but we need to give what we like. Imam Ali alayhi salam didn't give something he didn't like. He gave what he liked, he gave his ring. He gave something that he was wearing that was valuable to him. And these are the kind of charities, you know, we need to look at it in, you know, another point of view that, wow, you know, we should give charities to the things we like. How you mentioned Lady Fatima alayhi salam, she gave her dress and it was new and it was her wedding dress. And she gave it as a charity. So sometimes we think charity is like only the money or, you know, it's only giving it to a certain group or certain, you know, online or, you know, sadaqa box or whatnot. But sometimes people are actually in need of food. You know, instead of us spending, you know, um, so much on food, on sustenance for ourselves, for our iftar, you know, we can cut down on what we eat and eat, you know, one variety. And then the rest of what we're going to spend on, we'll send it on to the poor. You know, sometimes if we live in an area or in a village where we can cook and go out and give people those who are, who are in need of food, sometimes poor people, they don't want money. They want food, you know, and, you know, it's very nice to see those charities who actually cook food and they go all around to those who are homeless, those who are in need, those who are poor, those who are orphans and give them the food because sometimes they don't want money. They want you to buy them clothing and sometimes they want you to actually give them the food because they're starving. You know, we often think that charity, we, if we give charity international and we send the charity to international countries for aid, of course we do that, of course. But we shouldn't and we mustn't forget the charity on your own doorstep. In this country alone, and in subhanAllah, there are many Muslim charities that are providing help for the community of this country. You just have to go out onto the streets in the winter months and you see people are living on the streets in the cold weather. They have no food, they have no shelter. 
they are sleeping in their sleeping bags and it's becoming more and more and more prominent now if you walk onto the streets and you're seeing this every day. Charity, to be honest, starts first at home. You then look at your neighbors around you. Are your neighbors, is there anyone from your 40 houses that are around you? And our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, teaches us this. Is your neighbor around you okay? Do they need anything? Are they financially secure? Are they going hungry? Do they have enough clothes? So it's also our duty as a Muslim to ask about our neighbors, not just in the COVID times where we were all asking about each other, but in the good times as well, where we are happy, are our neighbors happy? And we spoke about iftar. You know, alhamdulillah, we are blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have multiple dishes on our table, so much so that we can't even eat what we cook every day. Cooking a simple iftar and give it, giving it to your neighbor who even may not be Muslim, to teach them the values of what the Ahlul Bayt alayhum wasalam, teach us, this is also a charitable act. A, you're helping your neighbor and B, you're teaching them in an indirect way, what Islam teaches us and what our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, teaches us. SubhanAllah, there are so many examples of charity, of charitable actions from our beloved Ahlul Bayt alayhum wasalam. Asking after somebody who is not well is also a charitable action. Asking after your friend or your family member or your neighbor, somebody who you may not even know, somebody who doesn't know you, are you okay? I haven't seen you today. Are you feeling well? These are all acts of charity which go unnoticed and go very undervalued. And the Holy Quran, we've spoken about this, but let's just the last part of this episode talk about more about what the Quran says about charity. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps on emphasizing the act of giving, of act of charity. He says in the Holy Quran in Surah Baqarah verse 274, those who spend their wealth in Allah's way, be it by night or by day, secretly or publicly, and we spoke about this, they will have their reward with their Lord. So whether you give in secret or you give publicly, your reward, depending on your need, lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this last part of today's episode, let's just concentrate a little bit more on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran with regards to charity. You know, we mentioned Imam Ali alayhi salam and the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended upon him because of the charity. And likewise for his wife Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. You know, Surah Al-Insan, Hal ata ala al-insanu hina min al-dahri lam yakun shayyan madhkura. You know, this was a story of Lady Fatima alayhi salam. And you know, you touched upon it a bit. Um, but for those viewers to remind them and remind ourselves in the holy month that one day Fatima Zahra alayhi salam, she saw Al-Hassan wal Hussein, And, you know, she did a nidr that if they were cured from the illness, I'm going to fast three days. And Fatima Zahra alayhi salam and Amir al-Mu'neen, they lived in a very simple home. They didn't live in a house that had, you know, so much grocery shopping and, you know, they packed up and, you know, they have other kind of options to eat. No, Amir al-Mu'neen alayhi salam used to go out and earn and then bring, you know, wheat or barley, flour, so that they can cook it and they can make it into a dough. And earn to get some dates. And that was all their food. There was no soup. There was no stew. There was no any of these foods and appetizers that we eat today. It was just that barley bread that can fill them up and the dates that can give them energy. And if and so, you know, maybe a glass of milk or yogurt. And the majority of the time, it was just, you know, that bread and the dates. So the first day that Imam Ali, alayhi salam, you know, he brings the, in, the sustenance daily. Fatima here, cook. So she made dough and she made bread, barley bread. And we all know the story that the first night, some poor knocked the door. Can I have some food? She gave it to him. And she was starving. And the next day, Asir, someone who was a prisoner, knocked the door. Fatima, do you have food? She gave her. She gave her own food. Mm -hmm. And she lasted three days that she was fasting. And her and the Hassan and the Hussein and Imam Ali alayhi salam were starving. 
until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended a whole surah, surah al-insan on their behalf. And when we read the Quran, we realize their charity of Ahl al-Bayt is mentioned in the Holy Quran. We realize what Ahl al-Bayt donate and give, it's mentioned in the Holy Quran. Every single thing that happens to Ahl al-Bayt, Allah descends it in the Holy Quran. And in this holy month of Ramadan, all what we read is the Holy Quran. To remind us of them, of their charity, so that we can give charity, of their goodness, of their greatness, of their value, of how we should submit towards them, how we should show love towards them, how we should do the good stuff and avoid the evil. And you know, the days of Ramadan pass by so quickly that we don't realize that we have a lot of deeds that we want to do and give, but there's no time, especially living in our daily times where we're scheduled with jobs and works and, you know, school and whatnot. And, you know, our daily lives that we look and we're like, okay, we forgot to do this and this and that. And the month of Ramadan is done. So the least we can do in this holy month of Ramadan from good deeds is to give charity, one to the poor, one to those who are around us, one to those who are in need, even those who, you know, we don't see them around us, you know, those who we see on social media, who, you know, they're living in a village or in a corner around the world that no one knows them and they need help. Those who have children who are ill and they need donations, they're orphans, they need our help. How we like our children and we care, we should care about others. If you don't care about your other brothers and sisters in Islam, then you're not a Muslim. And from that point, you know, when we read the Quran in the month of Ramadan, it reminds us of Ahl al-Bayt and it reminds us how, of how much they have given and how much we need to remind ourselves to give as well. So this is the holy month of, of charity, of the month that, you know, one good deed is multiplied and the least we can give is either donate, give what we have from our clothing to those who are in need, to those who are poor, or even buy them new clothing and, and make them happy. You mentioned in the beginning that, you know, um, sadaq is also a smile. Do you know how much, you know, benefits we get by giving to an orphan and making them smile? That all goes back to us. That's all good for us. You know, if you, if you do good, you do it for yourself. And if you bad, you do it bad for yourself. So if you do good, that good that you're doing, it's going to go back and it's going to reflect on your life and yourself and the calamities and the issues and the illnesses and the problems you're going through. You will realize how they're all solved very quickly. It's from one action that you can take and it's to give charity. You know, one point that I want to mention is the charity that we leave and we give for, to our marhumin. Mm -hmm. So our... Our loved ones who have passed away, who are no longer on this earth, and we've spoken about this before, They now their book is closed. They can't do any more good deeds. We on this earth, especially in this month of Mahi Ramadan, where the multiple the actions that we do are, are multiplied, the good deeds that we do are multiplied, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful. We perhaps don't deserve it, but He is so merciful. If we do something, a small act of charity... And we do it in the name of our marhumin who have passed away. Not only are we benefiting, but they are benefiting as well. And we are teaching our children the emphasis and the essence of charity. So inshallah, when we pass away, our children will do charity for us. Even the recitation of one surah is charity. The recitation of one salawat is charity. It doesn't have to be physical money. Money. One pound even given in the right niyat is charity. And something that we spoke about, charity of our neighbors, which occurred to me as well, is when Sayyidah Fatima salamu alayhi alayhi and Imam Ali alayhi salam, they married our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, fed everyone. Food was cooked. And this is charity as well, to feed people, to make people happy. This is all charity, looking after your community and your neighbors and your loved ones. This is all charity. And inshallah, in this holy month of Ramadan, let us make it a point to increase the amount of charity we do, whether it's monetary charity, whether it's time, whether it's simple actions like making somebody happy. Every day should be a blank canvas for us. We should not think, okay, yesterday I did this, so I'm okay for a week. Every day we should start fresh and think, what can I do now in my day to benefit myself and my marhumin and also to benefit your parents. Even if your parents are living, whatever you do, 
you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that charity, that reward, that thawab goes to your parents. They're the ones who instill the values of charity from the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam into your parents, into you. So whatever we do in this world, let our parents get the thawab, whether they're living or they've passed away. Even when we go for ziyara, we recite ziyara of Imam Hussein on our behalf of our parents and our marhumin. So these are the simple things that we can inshallah instill in our life and inshallah learn, especially in this holy month of Ramadan. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran in Surah 63 verse 10 has said, and spend in the way of Allah from what he has provided you before death. Before death approaches, one of you, and he says, my Lord, if only you would delay me but a brief term so I would give charity amongst and do the righteous. We don't want to leave this world and feel regretful, feel remorseful. We don't want to leave this month of Mahi Ramadan and feel, have we done enough charity? We don't want the time of our death to come and for us to feel, have we done enough? Inshallah, we learn from this month, we learn from each other. We learn from the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. Thank you so much, dear sister, once again for joining us. This has been a beautiful topic to learn from, especially when we incorporate the narrations and the traditions of our beloved Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. Thank you for joining us once again, sister, and thank you for joining us at home, dear viewers. Inshallah, we pray for each other in these holy nights. We pray for the shifa of all the marids around the world, and we mustn't forget our, our beloved Imam Zamana alayhi salam. We take out Sadqa in his name daily, and we pray for his shifa and eternal safety and quick reappearance. Until next time, dear viewers, thank you for watching. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.